hopefully I'll make this video short. <clears throat> I'm like, <clears throat> sitting here needed, needing to use the restroom. But, no, this is an ultra important video because, like, it's a very uh, timely subject matter. Yeah, this is going on right now. Yeah, this is blatant insanity. I should mention, first of all, that I think that the, the Paris terror attack was a hoax, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be used against the, the French people, which it is, obviously. And it's going to be used against youth in, uh, in Europe in general, where I found some of this kid's Instagram photos, one of the false flag terrorists. So far, what I found out about these terrorists, at least a, a few of them, they're European. They're not even Syrian. Although they did go to Syria and, you know, get hooked up with ISIS. You know, it's, uh, old bombers, ISIS. The CIA's ISIS. You know, uh, Bush cronies, ISIS, as old bomber is a literal cousin of Bush. And, you know, Bush has been cronies with the, the Saudis since, like, what was it, like the 1970s. Bin Ladens and, and Bushes like got together and began to scheme treachery. Anyhow, you know, I should show you this this photo. And I'm gonna say a little something about the photo. Look at that high and tight right there. It's a military haircut. Get another military haircut right there. Take note of the teamwork that they're using. This guy up here pulling him into the window. This guy down here lifting him up. They're gonna pull this guy into the into the train in a minute, of course. You know, same thing going on over here. This guy's like, hand me up the bag. Give me the bag. You know, if you're like traveling with a bunch of people that you don't know, like, do you go handing your bag into some window that like? You know, maybe the guy's not even going to help you get in there. He's just going to, like, dis disappear down this train with your bag. No. No. You don't. You don't hand off your bag. You keep your, your backpack on you, you get in through the door. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, all of these guys, look at this. Does this guy look like he's been starving in a war zone? No, he looks like he's been doing push-ups. You know, his arms right there. He's got, like, defined, um, you know, uh, defined, what's that, the tricep. You know, his tricep muscle is defined. He's got like uh, his forearm muscles also defined. This guy, military haircut. This guy, military haircut. This guy, military haircut. Can't really see those guys up there, but that guy could have a military haircut. Probably this guy's got a military haircut. How'd it come to be that everybody here is so military? You know, these being the supposed refugees from Syria. <clears> hmm. <throat> So, yeah, last February, it was actually announced that, you know, way before this, this whole supposed, you know, refugee crisis, that ISIS was going to be, ISIS announced themselves. They, they stated it outright, you know, to make sure they get a bunch of people on board with this mission, that they're going to guise themselves as refugees and then follow waves of migration into foreign nations in order to do terrorism. So, you know, there's Paris terrorist attack, you know, uh, the CIA cronies, Mossad cronies, ISIS, as it is. You know, it's just exactly the, the plan that, that was made last year. You know, um, or, yeah, I don't know, it, it was announced last February, but it was like, you know, presumably they, they were like in plan, you know, they were in the planning stage of it before they announced it. So it was about last year, you know, where we're coming up on the, the turn of the year here. And, um, you know, it, it is exactly what they already told us they were going to do. You know, I got like old friends from like elementary school that are posting like, oh, the poor refugees, we gotta take the refugees, and I'm like, no, 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 this is an invasion army. They're not, 
they're not refugees. I'm all for taking Syrian refugees in, but these are the guys that have been beheading Syrian, uh, Syrian civilians. They got sent over there by the Obama administration to behead Syrian civilians. Now, if you got no clue as to what the history of the CIA is, it's very vicious treachery. Okay, if you look up the term banana republic, uh, you know, like one, one example of a banana republic would be Colombia, El Salvador. There's like, there's, you know, these South American nations, which were the banana republics that the CIA, because the Dole Fruit Company wanted cheap labor there, the CIA tri uh, trained the corporate fascists of, of those foreign nations. And what the corporate fascists of those foreign nations did, based on their CIA training, was when the workers would strike, that they would say, like, nah, we're not doing this for, you know, this, these crazy cheap wages. You know, we'll just go, like, sit on our duffs and, like, you guys can screw. You know, we'll collect the fruit of the forest and whatever. What they would do is, they would go to where these striking workers lived, and they would use chainsaws to cut them in four. They cut them, like, up from their crotch, like, through their shoulder, and then they'd cut them in half the other way, you know, horizontally, you know, so they'd give them a vertical tear with a chainsaw up through their crotch to their shoulder, and then a tear across their belly, literally cutting them in four, doing this in front of their children. That's what the CIA trained the, uh, the, the, the goon squads of the Banana Republics that were under the, under the employment of the Dole Fruit Company to bring striking workers in line with their, with their agenda. So, if you don't think that the CIA trained these fuckers to be just as vicious, you are sorely mistaken. These people, they have been trained, you know, and if you watch some, some videos of what they were doing in Syria, yeah, they'd like, they'd abduct uh, a woman, you know, because she, you know, she refused to wear the head, uh, you know, the, the, um, she refused to wear the veil. And, you know, they, they would take her to the, the center of the town and make a public display of shooting her in the forehead. You know, they'd like stand there and like have a little like, you know, banter with her, you know, telling everybody like, this woman, she refuses to, you know, to follow our orders as, you know, ISIS, Muslim, Islam. That's these guys. These very same militants that were, that were recruited by the CIA, who traveled to, traveled to Syria from foreign nations, a lot of them from Saudi Arabia. And, you know, in Saudi Arabia, women can't even drive. You know, Saudi Arabia... Uh, women, they, they can't go out of the house without their, you know, without their face being covered. That they have to wear a veil out of the house. You know, it's not even the hijab. Like, the, you know, the hijab, you know, some Muslim women do it because, you know, they don't mind covering their hair. They think it's like, you know, some romantic thing to do for, for their future husband. But the veil? Nobody cares to wear the veil. You know, it's like um, the... The temperature in the Saudi desert, you know, is like a hundred degrees plus a lot of the time. And women can't even go out of the house to the mall without putting a veil on their face. It's insane. Wearing all black, compelled to wear a veil. And, you know, they, they got absolutely no respect for, for women in general. You know, and it, translate, it translates to them having nearly no respect for anybody. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're very, uh, they're, they're now a very decadent society based on, like, the, the oil wealth that they have acquired. And, yeah, they, uh, you know, they're essentially, like, you know, they're, they're spoiled brats. You know, these, these guys that got recruited by the CIA to go and slaughter Syrian civilians. Now, what ISIS did when they first got involved in the fight over there is they went and captured the oil fields and now the the free syrian army who thought that isis was working with them at first they seen that isis went and just straight captured the oil fields then isis began to sell the oil to the assad regime who the free syrian army had been fighting for like 
they've been fighting the Assad regime for like two years at that point, and you know supposedly ISIS was there helping them, but they weren't really. And then they started selling the oil to to their enemy, to the guy who had been murdering the civilians of Syria, that he bombed the whole of all of their cities into rubble, except for Damascus, you know, which is where like he's based out of. You know, he didn't try to bomb Damascus at all, but everywhere else he reduced it to rubble. I guess there's a few other places where uh, there's like a heavy Alawite population, which is like his people out on the coast, and you know he didn't he didn't do too uh, too much bombing out there. But you know if uh, if like the area was captured, then yeah he just bombed the, the whole place into into oblivion. And so, you know, the Free Syrian Ar Army was fighting them. The ISIS came in and said you know, they were going to help, but then they didn't really help. And then when the Free Syrian Army got, got smart to the fact that ISIS was not really on their side, then they started fighting ISIS. That was about a year and a half, two years ago now. And when they began to fight ISIS, they had to actually take a break from fighting the Assad regime. And so, uh, you know, they, they focused on fighting ISIS for, for a long while, and the Assad regime sat on the side and, and waited, because the Assad regime, they'd like have barely any soldiers left. Like, as soon as the soldiers start fighting their own countrymen, they just quit. They just go over to the other side. And uh, so they brought in, like, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and they brought in uh, Lebanese Hezbollah, and, you know, they were all fighting on the Assad side. So, the Assad regime has been essential. Uh, you know, they, they have no actual military under them that they can use against their own people. And they're fighting their own people. And so, they brought in a whole bunch of mercenaries. And if the FSA didn't have to fight ISIS, in addition to fighting the Assad regime then they'd, they'd have pushed Assad over a long time ago. The people would have won Syria, and, you know, they'd, uh, they'd probably be, you know, trying to rebuild their cities right now. But when, when Obama said that he was going to begin to bomb ISIS, what happened is videos started to show up on YouTube of... U.S. technology, particularly uh, precision-guided weapons. Uh, one that I saw particularly was the the Moab bomb, which is it's called uh, MOAB, Mother of All Bombs, and it's a a thousand-pound bomb. I want to say thousand-pound bomb dropped on a FSA facility. It was a bunch of FSA guys, Free Syrian Army, and they got hit by a Moab. Which, uh, you know, the Moab, you recognize it because it's a really tall bomb, like the way it falls out of the sky, it's really like long, huge, thousand pounds. And um, it's precision guided. The blast radius is huge. Uh, like it'll, it'll take out like a whole city block. And, you know, that was pretty much what, what was represented in the video. And all the bombing videos from Syria before that, the Assad regime bombing their own cities, you know, using aerial bombardment on their own cities. What, um, what it requires is that they do uh, low flyovers. They have to fly directly over the target and they have to release the bomb at a, at a certain moment in order to get the bomb to fall on target. And they're losing planes to do that type of bombing. So they just bomb from up higher and then they're missing their target, and so they, they weren't really fighting these guys to, to where, you know, they were destroying them. And so, you know, it's been totally ineffective, the Assad regime with, you know, the whole of his military content trying to fight the whole of his people, basically, because the vast majority of the Syrian population are Sunni Muslims, and they're united against the, the Assad regime, Assad being Alawite. Uh, his father having been a dictator who bestowed his son with, you know, basically a kingship. You know, they have like a, so far they have like this, you know, bogus elections. They got this passed down of, of the presidency through, um, you know, through, through a, a line of nepotism that, you know, they're just like, 
they're maintaining the rule of a family that is part of a minority sect. So, yeah, there's, there's like, there's no excuse for it. And then ISIS went in there and they were aiding the Assad regime. And then Obama says that he's going to, he's going to bomb ISIS, but he's bombing the FSA. And then it wasn't until the FSA started getting bombed by, by the Obama regime that then they rejoined forces with ISIS. So they were compelled because ISIS is safe and they're witnessing this, that ISIS is safe from the Obama bombs, and so they had to start working with ISIS. So now all of ISIS is fleeing Syria, they're leaving the FSA there, Russia is doing bombing missions on, on Syria, but they have the same type of like low-fly Passover, you know, um, in, uh, like they have to release the bomb at a, at a certain moment and so they're losing jets also and uh, you know now uh, Obama says he wants to put US military boots on the ground in Syria US military doesn't speak the language so they're gonna go over there they're gonna be killing FSA they're gonna be doing like house raids on people that are just totally innocent yeah, they're going to be dropping bombs everywhere, and, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's a huge mess. And uh, now that ISIS is fleeing Syria, you know, going into Europe, doing terrorism on behalf of the Federation, you know, the, the Federal Empire, as spans globally, the Rothschild, uh, you know, banksterism, that the Rothschilds, they own the manufacturers that produce the bombs that are being dropped on Syria and everywhere in the Middle East and, you know, uh, Pakistan, drone bombs in Yemen and Libya and Iraq and uh, they, they own the vast majority, the, the U.S. banks own the vast majority of U.S. Fortune 500 companies, which are, you know, the, the military industrial complex. The same Rothschild banksterism owns the Russian military industry. You know, that's where Assad's getting his weapons. You know, so Assad, uh, you know, the money goes from Assad to, uh, to the Russian arms industry, to the Rothschilds, you know, on that side. On the other side, you know, the, uh, the Rothschilds own the French arms industry. They own the banks. They own the Central Bank of France. So, um, when the when the French government buys weapons, they're buying them from the Rothschild family, and then when the U.S. military buys weapons, they're buying them from the Rothschild family. So on and so forth. Everything, all of this war nonsense. No matter who dies over there, it's all money in the Rothschild's pocket. Anyhow, I should read this. What it is that I wrote here. Take note of the military haircuts of these refugees. Take note of the military teamwork as it is used to overcome obstacles in a, in a military obstacle course. Take note that the Paris terror attack was conducted by ISIS members who had just recently arrived to Europe from Syria, having traveled there under the guise of being refugees. Take note of Sweden's rape statistics, where 9 out of 10 rapes are being done by war refugee, Muslim terrorists. Take note that last February, ISIS announced their plan to invade foreign nations under the guise of being refugees. Take note that 90% of the refugees are, that are traveling out of the ISIS war zone are military age males. Hmm. Anybody who is asking to receive these goons should arrive straight to hell with them. These are not refugees. They are an invasion army and the traitor-in-chief has opened the gates to them here in the USA, you know, the traitor-in-chief being Obama, as a Trojan horse. I'm all for taking Syrian refugees. These are not them. These are the same goons that Obama, that Obama's CIA financed through proxy of Saudi Arabia to behead Syrian civilians. These are the guys that were over there doing the beheadings that made Syria a human, uh, 
you know, uh, a human rights disaster. Uh, you know, they, they made it a, a catastrophe. You know, just, just to live in, in Syria. These are the guys that did it. You know, and then they went over and they, uh, they began to, they, they did some warfare on the Kurdish people and then they began to abduct the Kurdish women and bring them back to Syria. And they were gang raping them and trading them as, as assets, trading them to, you know, to their buddies. You know, and then my friends are like, oh, we got to be nice to the refugees. No, no, not these guys. No, we ain't got to be nice to these guys. You know, these guys need to rot in hell. You know, the, the CIA that trained them needs to rot in hell. Obama that financed them needs to rot in hell.